Hello, uh, we're in my car again. It's been a while since we've been in here and I'm playing with something new that I just got. Let me show it to you here. It is what we call an OBD2 um, communicator, I guess. I don't know the exact term. And this little device here, which I bought for about $30 on Amazon, allows me to hook to my USB port on my computer and communicate with the computer in my car. It allows us to determine things like uh, error codes, if you have any LEDs on on your dash uh, indicating errors, which I have had one that pops on and off uh, for the last year or so on my car. Uh, my car has been running very rough. Um, and it allows you to do a lot of other things, determine RPMs, uh, engine temperature, um, a bunch of stuff. Basically anything that the car does that computer keeps track of and you can communicate and store that data and plot it out later on. Now I just got this device in the mail maybe an hour, 45 minutes to an hour ago and I haven't been able to do too much with it but I want to share with you what I have learned so far. So real quick, let me minimize or open up a new terminal window at least um, and make the, put the camera down here. Um, to make this a little bit bigger, we're going to go to CD Dev, which is where our um, our devices are, any hardware device on our computer, and I'm going to list TTY, and I'll hit tab a few times, and it lists out stuff, and we're looking for one called TTY USB 0. Now, you notice it's not there because I haven't plugged this in yet. Let me plug it in real quick. And right away, if I hit tab again, you'll see that the last item in this list is TTY USB 0. So Linux, uh, built into the kernel, already has the drivers for this type of device, which is great, which means we can grab raw data. Now, there are applications out there, GUI applications. There's one that looks really nice uh, called... Um, uh, PYOBD. Uh, it's not in the repositories. I saw it online. It's a Python open source under a GPL code. Gives you a nice GUI interface with uh, a lot of output. Um, I installed that real quick just to give it a try and I got an error and I haven't gone back to it since because really what I want to do, I want to create my own software just by grabbing data from the command line. Uh, the thing is, how do I communicate with this device? Well, let me plug the other half into my car, which will plug in right underneath your dash. Usually there'll be a little uh, plastic thing that flips open and then mine says OBD on it. Um, and uh, the computers and cars changed, uh, but at least in the United States, this device should work on any uh, car uh, that has been made since uh, 1996, I believe, from what I've read. So I just plug that in there. And also note, on the back of it, it says, uh, if I can get the camera to focus here on it, it says that the baud rate is uh, uh, 38400. That's important for when we're communicating with it uh, through the computer. We need to tell it the baud rate or else we're going to get like a bunch of gibberish. Uh, but even when you do it right, it kind of looks like gibberish if you don't know how to decode it, which we'll go over right now as well. Um, there's different ways to communicate with it. Uh, in the future, I'd like to communicate with Python, but right now I'm just going to use Screen. Uh, and if you've watched some of my Arduino tutorials, you've seen me use uh, Screen to communicate with serial USB devices and serial devices before. And all we have to do is, as root or sudo, we'll type sudo, I'll put this camera down, sudo screen, the device you want to connect to, so in my case, TTY. USB zero, and then the baud rate, which will be uh, three, what was it again? That's an eight, by the way, three, eight, four, zero, zero. And once again, the mind says that on the back of the device. I'll hit enter, and of course, it's gonna ask me for my passwords. That's your password, because you're running a sudo. That has nothing to do with your car. Um, and you get this blank screen at first. Now, there's different commands that you can type and send to the, to the uh, computer on the car to retrieve different information. And I want to retrieve error codes, and our code for that will be 01 space 01, and I'll hit enter. And right there, we get a little bit of an output um, that's just a, a error code, basically, that we can now detect. Now, the first uh, two sets of number here, this 01, and that, that should actually be a 1-4. Uh, I mean, I'm a 4-1, uh, but for some reason, the 4 gets cut off from what I've read. Um, so we don't care about that, and I don't know what these last set of digits are 
right now all we care about are these two sets of code right there, the 0107. Now, if we open up uh, a web browser and we go to Google, we can search uh, EM drawing a blank ELM. The device is an ELM two seven three two seven. Once again, I've only been playing with this for about an hour or so. Um, but all we have to do is type in uh, ELM set. Actually, ELM electronics is actually what we want to type in at this point. And that will bring us the first link here is ELM Electronics, and they have a products page. We'll click on that. And if we go over here, we have data sheets. And now you just have to find the model, and mine is an ELM 327. Uh, there's a few listed here. I'm going to just go for this one that's, uh, that's the newer version here, 1.4 at this point, uh, 1.4B. And I'll click on this PDF file. I will download it and open it. And you will see that it is quite a big, it's a 76 page document. And it will tell you everything you need to know about working with this device uh, on a developer's end. So um, I skimmed through it real quick and I know that the stuff I'm looking for, for what I'm going over with today is a page 26. And this isn't, uh, this is a different document than I was looking at before. Maybe I downloaded the wrong one. Um, which one of these did I click on? Oh, I think I might have clicked on the quick reference. I don't want the quick reference. I want, uh, no, that, that's, sorry about this. I thought that that was the right one. I'm pretty sure it's page 26 that I want to look at, so it's not that one. Maybe it's this one under the quick reference, the, the QS. No, that's a seven-page document. Okay, then maybe I clicked on uh, this first one. I know it's one of these. Up oh, there we go. Open it up. This is a 59-page document. There we go. This is the one I was looking at earlier. I'm sure they all have basically the same information, but just what I'm looking for. And I'll put links to this in the description if I remember. And uh, right here, it tells you how to decode uh, that code. And basically, you take those sets of numbers I was just talking about, this uh, 0107. And if you look at this PDF file, it says right here that first digit, according to this chart, since it's a zero, be actually becomes P0. So my code would be P0107. Now if I go back to Google and I just start typing in my search bar here, P01, and you can see that it starts coming up with all these uh, error codes already. I'll check the one that I have here. And the very first page here is OBD2 trouble code. Uh, that's right, I keep saying error code. They're actually called trouble code. Um, and it says that's mine right there. P0, uh, P0107, it gives you a title of exactly what that problem is, and it gives an exclamation, explanation of what it means, um, which is still Greek to me because I know nothing about cars, and, um, and it gives you potential system problems and potential causes. So that's our first look at this device. I've only had it for a short time now. I'm sweating like crazy because it's Florida in the summer. And uh, I have my air conditioning off so it doesn't make too much noise while I'm recording. Um, but I plan on doing a lot more with this device in the future and sharing what I find with you guys. Um, so thanks for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. And I just hope that you have a great day and I hope that you found this tutorial useful. Thank you.